Hello, it is the Experts Talk program on Kazakh TV. Today we will discuss a very important and hot topic, rehabilitation after coronavirus infection, and in particular one of the important burning questions, how to restore lung function after the illness. Our guest is Doctor of Medical Sciences, Professor, Chief Freelance Pulmonologist of Almaty, Saulia Kasenova. Saulia Laikizi. Hello. Hello, Sarek. Who of those who have had a coronavirus infection needs, I emphasize, needs to undergo rehabilitation? All patients who have been ill with COVID-19 need rehabilitation. Another thing is what form of rehabilitation should be. That is, it depends on the degree of infection itself. That is, if the patient has had a mild COVID, according to commuted tomography, the volume of the lesion is up to 25-30%. Then it can be managed by a therapeutist or a district doctor or generalists. Mm -hmm. He asks the patient's condition, gets acquainted with his examination data and chooses one or another rehabilitation tactic. This can be limited to drug-free treatment. If the patient has an average degree of the disease, he suffered, according to computed demography, the volume of lung lesion up to 50%. Then, in this case, the patient needs more serious rehabilitation. That means medications are added to non-drug methods. Mm -hmm. And then the doctor of the same polyclinic can recommend taking medicines that thin the blood. But the timing, duration of the use of these medicines depends on the results of the analysis. If we are talking about severe patients who have a long lesion volume of 75% or more, then of course we see from the experience that coronavirus infection is not only a long lesion, it's a lesion of all organs and systems. And then a whole team of doctors should work. This percentage should be rehabilitated not only by a therapist, but also by a pulmonologist, a doctor of lung diseases, a cardiologist, because this patient's complain of rapid heartbeat. A neurologist and psychotherapist, because we have unfortunately seen that the virus affects the nervous system in patients. And also a gastroenterologist, a nephrologist, and so on. This can be listed further, depending on which organs have suffered the most. Well, actually, it is a well-known fact that lung tissue suffers first of all. How to restore lung function in full? You correctly asked the question that the lungs are affected. Why? Because this disease is viral, the site of entries, the respiratory tract, and the lungs, of course, get in the way of the virus. And the lungs are the first and main target for the coronavirus. And then the process proceeds differently for everyone. There are severe patients. Also, there are generally dramatic situations. In general, you can restore the lungs, but we must remember that COVID is not just a virus that damages the lungs. It also causes immune inflammation, and in addition to immune inflammation, a cascade of coagulation disorders. The severity of the patient's condition is associated with the development of micro and macro thrombosis in the pulmonary small vessels and large vessels. And therefore, lung recovery treatment is associated with the restoration of the immune system and blood viscosity. There is an important remark about the resulting fibrosis. How can this be minimized? What is fibrosis? 
Fibrosis is connective tissue which, unlike lung tissue, is dense. It doesn't breathe. That is, the alveoli, which are air sacs, filled with air, are replaced by dense connective tissue. These areas of the lung lose their function first of breathing and second of gas exchange. The most important thing is that when fibrosis tissue develops, the person suffers from a lack of oxygen. The process of gas exchange is disrupted. We can say that the development of fibrosis is the most dramatic. And how to minimize it? It had to be controlled when the patient was in the hospital to actively fight against this immune inflammation which I spoke about, and hypercoagulability, that is, to restore lung function as much as possible. In addition, we placed our patients in a prone position, because most of the lungs, the respiratory surfaces are located on the back, that is, we forced patients to breathe more with their lungs. And so, when the lung begins to breathe on its own, when immune inflammation and coagulation come into balance, then of course you can prevent the development of fibrosis. <coughs> if the process was very difficult, fibrosis developed, then the only way to maintain health is oxygen therapy. You just anticipated my question. I know that oxygen therapy did not appear immediately. It existed, but it is starting to be used in a mass format now. What is oxygen therapy? This is an oxygen treatment. Since the gas exchange process is disrupted in the lungs, the body needs additional oxygen supply. We all know that if we do not have enough oxygen, the so-called hypoxia develops. Headaches, heart pain, fatigue appear, mood decreases, and the immune system suffers from hypoxia. Therefore, if the lungs are affected by COVID-19, then of course the patient's body needs additional oxygen, oxygen therapy. For this, there are special devices called oxygen concentrators. The degree of concentration of this oxygen can vary from 85 to 95 percent. Mm -hmm. They also differ in the rate of oxygen intake. There may be a small speed of 3 liters per minute. Minute, there may be a high speed. As a pulmonologist, I believe that the optimal speed is 5 liters per minute. So each case should be treated more or less individually? Yes, individually. We asked you to bring us one of the home devices. I thought they were bigger. <laughs> It's very easy to use it. We click on the button oxygen, it begins to be produced, that is, it passes out of the air, it is concentrated, that's why it's called concentrator. It is concentrated here, it's humidified, and on this display we see the concentration of oxygen. It increases gradually, it was 30, now it's 60, and it will reach 95. And here on the board is the rate of oxygen intake. What is the patient doing? He takes this nasal cannula and just puts it on his nose. That is, he receives pure oxygen. I started to breathe, I felt good, already 90%. This device has a nebulizer attachment at the same time. You insert a nebulizer into the second cannula and you can breathe the medicines that the doctor advised. If the device is of average power, the duration of therapy is 3 liters per minute. You need to take breaks. For example, I can recommend to my patients to breathe for 40 minutes and rest for 10 or 15 minutes. If this device was more powerful, it would work 24 hours a day without interruption. Because patients who have had COVID become oxygen dependent. I'm talking about severe patients.
An important question is breathing exercises. Pulmonologists have been talking and talking about this even before COVID-19. And in general, it is very good for health, but precisely within the framework of rehabilitation after coronavirus infection. COVID has made us realize that breathing exercises should be prescribed immediately from the first moment of the disease. The lungs must be trained. You need to force yourself to breathe. Since this is a very aggressive viral infection, the patient has shortness of breath due to lack of air, he suffocates and it's very difficult for him to perform the most basic movements. Therefore, my personal experience suggests that you should do the simplest breathing exercises, that is, take a deep breath, fill the lungs with oxygen completely to the diaphragm. You held your breath, the air was distributed, what you breathed in was distributed over all the pulmonary fields. It's very important that everything is filled with air. And exhale this air gradually within six seconds. We count on our fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six. The exhalation should be lengthened. You do not need to immediately start with the Strelnikova method or some more complex techniques. And the second so-called diaphragmatic breathing, when you breathe with your stomach, you put one hand on your chest, the other hand on your stomach, take a deep breath, exhale with your stomach, and the stomach helps the lungs. When you do such breathing exercises, the simplest one, then you firstly aerate, ensure the flow of air into all sections, even the most distant sections, and the lungs are saturated with oxygen. Mm -hmm. The second stage is to do these exercises constantly, and then you can increase the load and move on to more complex exercises. Constantly, how many times a day? To begin with, I recommended my patients 20 minutes three times times a day. If the patient copes with this load, then you can increase it up to 30 minutes and then up to 40 minutes. But three times a day is the minimum. If possible, then you can do it more often. There was a lot of different information on the Internet. One of them is inhalation, including with mineral water. I am absolutely against it, and not only me, because mineral water, first of all, is not a sterile solution. Getting into the respiratory tract, it can cause contamination, and so on. That is, I do not recommend using non-sterile solutions. And what solutions for inhalation are conditionally suitable for many groups of patients? For sanitation purposes, you can use normal saline. This is already a sterile solution. If shortness of breath is severe, then we select bronchodilators. These are medicines that expand the lumen of the bronchi and reduce the severity of the shortness of breath. But this is decided only by a doctor, a specialist. Dear friends, I remind you once again we're here asking Saulia Laikese to give us some very simple recommendations. But if possible, please consult your doctor. An important remark about the diet during the rehabilitation period. As a pulmonologist, scientist, tell me, is there something special that you have learned over the past six months, or is everything the same? No, everything has changed dramatically because those patients who came to us said that during the illness they did not want to eat anything. Some patients have lost 6-8 pounds, they lost their sense of smell and taste, they did not feel the food, so they didn't want to eat anything, but the process moved, the disease receded, and gradually there was an appetite. The wives of our patients said that, for example, my husband began to eat well, I don't have time to cook for him. And we advise you to cook fatty broths, because this is the recovery of lung surfactant. Give white meat, it's easy to digest, protein is essential for lung recovery and more vitamins. But if during the acute period we recommended dosage forms of vitamins, then after recovery, vegetables and fruits. 
This is a fresh supply of vitamins. Another personal piece of advice that has helped many with lung diseases is greens. I advise you to eat parsley, of course, also dill, nuts, juices for drinks. We also recommended to drink cranberry juice and eat black currants, red currants, raspberries, lemons, an essential ingredient, oranges and tangerines. All these products contain vitamin C. In one of my interviews with reporters, I excellently said that we must not forget about our national traditions. Take Kumus and Shabbat, and the next day the whole country began to drink Kumus and Shabbat. In fact, we loved Kumus and Shabbat before coronavirus. This is an acidic product. Developed taste buds, contains a lot of vitamin C, a lot of trace elements and, of course, not a large percentage of alcohol, there is up to 10 percent. All this is rehabilitation and recovery. At the very beginning of our conversation, you said that, in especially difficult cases, a group of multidisciplinary doctors should participate in rehabilitation. We have already talked about nutrition, but what about psychotherapists and neuropathologists, depression and anxiety? What have you observed and what are some of your basic recommendations on this matter? Unfortunately, the coronavirus also affects the central nervous system. And this is noticed by others, relatives of patients, family, children, wife or husband. They see that something has changed. Not only has the person become inactive, he becomes indifferent. He's not interested in what previously interested him, neither domestic problems nor any work moments. And the person goes into depression. And that's why those rehabilitation centers that open in many hospitals necessarily keep a psychotherapist. Addressing the audience, I would like to say that we need to understand it, that it will all pass, but it takes time for the rehabilitation of the nervous system. Of course, it can take a long time, but we need to support this person. If he has anything, then he does not want to do around the house, then it's not necessary to force him. Or her. On the contrary, you need to change some duties, give the person simpler tasks, and then over time he or she will get stronger. The strength will be restored. This will definitely happen. He or she will return to normal life. In some cases, it's even necessary to prescribe small doses of sedatives and antidepressants. A large number of people undergo rehabilitation at home. We have already discussed many things in principle, but maybe we will give some brief summary. What I recommend, the daily routine is very important. So? This is a full-fledged sleep, at least eight hours. You need to sleep because sleep gives strength, gives energy. The body is fully restored. The second is nutrition. You need to eat what you want. The appetite returns. In order to return to its original state, you need more food. In third place is breathing exercises. Physical exercises must be given. And at the subsequent stages of rehabilitation, even some exercise therapy instructors give some serious strength loads, because the muscles must also be restored, the respiratory muscles. How will the breathing process take place if the respiratory muscles are not restored. Well, home oxygen therapy using oxygen concentrators. When necessary. Yes, in necessary cases. Some children say that we will send their parents to sanatorium, if possible, and we must remember again that these are places where people gather and here are the walks. 
walks in park zones. Saul Elai Kezir, thank you very much for the informative conversation and for your positive attitude as well as your work from all patients and from our viewers. Dear friends, Saul Kaseneva, Doctor of Medicine, was a guest of the Experts Talk program.